Well, the last yapping did pretty well. Let's do it again then. Keep the algorithm happy. Oh, and if you're completely unfamiliar with the wizard, then I advise staying tuned. This class will knock your socks off. Oh, and I am happy to announce I am finally free of the Octopath curse. Yes, the Octopath 2 review is out. You can go check it out after this if you haven't seen it. Just set aside an afternoon or something. It's long. Bravely's job system is one of its core features, offering the player a wide selection of classes to play from, and then mix and match to create the perfect team for your playstyle. It allows for adaptability and creativity, offering many methods for taking down a tricky foe, or allowing you to challenge yourself to make something rather diabolical. Or you could try to make a team comp that was harder to use just for the fun of it. Now, naturally, RPG fans love to debate each other about their opinions on the strengths and weaknesses of classes and builds in these kinds of games. See the whole last video I just posted about White Mage and the immensely varying responses I got to that. By the way, I loved reading through all those, both in agreement or not. Now, that take was mostly based around my belief that White Mage was too strong as the starting healer, specifically focused around the aspect of where you get it. I don't really mind White Mage being strong, I just ultimately wanted it moved away from the very start of the game if it was going to stay that strong throughout the whole game. But today, I want to go down memory lane and talk about what I, and probably many others, consider to be the strongest and arguably best class ever introduced to the series. You already know what this is from the thumbnail, but I'll repeat it here. Wizard is the best job the Bravely series has ever gotten. I want to review what the class is capable of, what exactly made it so strong, Psst, it's spellcraft, and compare it to other notoriously strong jobs from the series to see why I consider it Bravely's best job. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments after the video, and if you enjoyed the video, then please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Cheers! All right, wizard. So the very first problem with this is the same issue I took with White Mage in the last video. It was so unbelievably strong and is literally the first job you got in Bravely Second. Now I do understand the logic here. You get the spellcraft option early so that you can play with all the other forms of magic over the course of the game as you unlock more mage classes. But I think this is more a situation of Wizard was overtuned as fuck, rather than Wizard should have come later in the game. I think if you dropped some of the Wizard's numbers, the class would be... Well, it would certainly bring it more in line, but probably not fix everything. Now, let's just go through the Wizard and what it can do. The Wizard was a brand new class made for that game. A pseudo counterpart to Black Mage, Wizard was focused around its primary passive ability, Spellcraft, which enabled you to change the way magic behaved. Okay, so when you normally cast a spell, it just does the thing and then it's over. Spellcraft would, at the cost of an extra action on a turn and some MP, completely augment the way that spell behaves and then also give it a damage buff. Dart would make the spell automatically go first in turn order before everyone else. Needle would hit all enemies of the same name. Hammer was a versatile option, making your spell hit for physical damage instead of magical. Mist turned a spell into a damage over time cloud for three turns. Blast made it into an AoE attack. Wall was another interesting addition, creating a magic counterattack barrier you could put on your team. Rain let spells hit four random targets, effectively turning it into four casts. Arrow was a weird one, allowing you to select only a specific number of enemies to hit it with, and increasing the damage multiplier for having less targets. And finally, Nova just said, fuck it, everybody gets hit. All of that was just one part of this class. Granted, it was certainly the biggest part of the class, but still. You could also combine the Bishop's Good Measure passive to smash together two casts of the same spell into a single one for higher potency, and then as a third action, use Spellcraft to enhance it further. And again, Spellcraft gave a damage multiplier that generally increased the overall damage of the spell. Why was this a thing? 
because wizards' innate spell list, spirit magic, had relatively low numbers compared to other classes' spells because all of them were AoE. Spellcraft's damage modifiers were put in to offset the initially lower damage spirit magic would be doing, and also the fact that you were taking two actions to set this up. Remember, to use Spellcraft, you had to brave and use the spell on your first action and then Spellcraft on the second. That's not to say that Spirit Magic was unusable, though. I feel it does just fine, maybe not as good as stuff that comes later, but it's pretty versatile, considering the fact the devs decided it would be a good idea to just give it every elemental damage type. So not only did Spellcraft make its spells better, Wizard had every single element covered on its own, something only matched by Summoner for magic classes, and even then, Summoner had no light damage, Amaterasu only healed. Spirit Magic even included a non-elemental damage spell just to spit in Time Mage's face too. But don't worry, they made up in the end. We'll touch on that later. Okay, so what else we got on this bad boy? Damage dispersion, eh, whatever. Absorb magic damage, not bad. Get back a quarter of all magic damage taken as HP. Full charge, double spell potency when it max MP. Why? Do we really need the additional damage? Let's see. Ventriloquism. Oh. Now, so far, you might be saying to yourself, okay, but if I'm using Spellcraft, then at most, on a turn maxed out with four actions, I'm only getting to cast two modified spells from one wizard. So, of course, now we turn to Ventriloquism. While a very hefty three-slot cost for a single passive, the ceiling for Spellcraft DPS has just been blown to smithereens. Ventriloquism applies any spellcraft ability to all applicable magic used that turn, including spells cast by your allies. So if you use a magic team comp, you can cast a single fire rain if you want, and rain will then be applied to every other spell without you needing to use spellcraft on them. This can make healing with a bishop or white mage become a bit harder and require more attention before you do it, but in terms of magic DPS, it makes an immense difference. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret I acquired thanks to the work and knowledge of our Lord and Savior tables. Spellcraft's damage modifiers are doubled on spells that are normally party-wide. Spirit magic only does AoE, it has no single target option on its own compared to Black Mage, where Fire and Blizzard and Thunder can be either or. In this case, Spirit Magic gets the doubled modifier, but Black Magic wouldn't. This doubling also counts for Summoning, and more interestingly, Meteor. I suppose it's because it's already party-wide possible with it hitting random targets, but either way, this begins to take us down an all-too-familiar path. So using Meteor Rain, we get what may be the strongest spellcraft in the game, and then having nearly my full team just cast Meteor that all get rain applied to them will make for a shower of astral rocks that would make the extinction of the dinosaurs look like a fart in the wind by comparison. I'm not going to give a full recap of the Ghost Mage build, you can check out my video on it in the top right corner now, but just know that Spellcraft and Ventriloquism play key parts in a build that allows for unlimited Meteor Rain spam, which could just be set to auto and then kills literally anything in the game that isn't immune to magic, including the super boss. Yeah. So you take all of that and then allow it to work with every other magic class in that game. Bishop, Black Mage, White Mage, Red Mage, naturally, Time Mage, Summoner, Yokai, Astrologian even. All of those classes' spells you can augment with Spellcraft, and that is why I consider Wizard to be better than some other arguments for best job. You could debate that Exorcist is just as, if not more OP than Wizard because of its undo abilities, but the thing with them is that they don't really harmonize with nearly as many jobs, and not nearly as well. Like, yes, undo is very good, but it doesn't play into the customizability that Wizard offers, hence why I consider Wizard to be the better job, even though I personally like Exorcist more. So to recap, it has some of the widest versatility any job has ever seen, with every possible element under the sun at its disposal, 
can manipulate any kind of magic into something potent or fitting for the situation, be it for damaging or healing, and it has the potential to kill literally anything the game can throw at you because it can shift its damage to physical with hammer spellcraft. All of this, and it synergizes amazingly well with over a quarter of the game's available jobs. Hell, when I first played through Bravely Second, my healer was a wizard for main job with Bishop as sub, not the other way around, just so I could have Spellcraft as a free passive and save the other five slots for healer stuff, and it served me extremely well for the entire playthrough. But anyways, that's all my thoughts on why Wizard is the best job the Bravely series has gotten thus far. Now, for the big question, do you agree or disagree? Have a different job you would argue as being the best in the series history? Or do you have your own wizard memories you'd like to share? Drop your take down in the comments section below. I want to see what you all think. If you haven't yet, make sure to check out my Octopath Traveler 2 review. Yes, it is finally out, coming in at a whopping three hour runtime, almost. Been getting lots of good feedback on it, so thank you to everyone who's watched it. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.